If I could please have your attention on the call of meeting board. This is your November meeting on the Wilson County Board of Public Appeals. Do we have anyone with us this morning who signed up for the general comment period? And this is not about this particular case. This is about uh, having a comment period that the State Department to have before we do. Anybody signed up for general comments this morning? And hearing none, we will uh, uh, close the general comment period and move on into uh, our other issues. Is anyone else, anyone here wishes to withdraw a case this morning? Anyone here has a case on our agenda that they would like to withdraw or defer to another meeting? And if not, our agenda will remain as advertised. We have a court reporter here with us this morning that's taking a record of our proceedings. The court reporter is supplied uh, at no expense to the, uh, at the expense of Wilson County. If you would like a transcript of a particular case, uh, that transcript will be at your expense and you can obtain the transcript by seeing the court report at the end of our meeting. Just a reminder, if I could please, that everyone should dial for their cell phones. If you have a case that uh, you'd like to speak to this morning that's on our agenda, uh, you'll need to be sworn in. So if you do plan to make a statement in front of the board this morning, if you would please raise your right hand. <coughs> if you saw me swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, we hope you got it. I do. Thank you. When each case is called, if you're representing that particular case, if you would please come to the podium and we'll let you make whatever statements you would like to make to the board. After the applicant has had the opportunity to make a statement, then we'll hear from anyone else who wishes to address the case, be it uh, in support or in opposition. <coughs> also, the staff has made recommendations to the board regarding each case, and we'll be considering those recommendations as we make our decision. Just as a reminder to everyone this morning, the uh, meeting is being paid for telecast, so you will be able to uh, review the meeting later on uh, the Wilson County TV channel if you so desire. To the members of the board, earlier this month you were uh, mailed the minutes from our October meeting. We've had the uh, opportunity to look over those. At this time, do we have any corrections that need to be made to the minutes from the month of October? If not, go ahead and motion to approve the minutes from October. Motion to approve. Have a motion to approve. Have a second. Second. Have a motion to second. Any discussion on the motion to approve October minutes? Not all in favor of aye. 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 All opposed vote no. Yeah. Okay. Moving into our first case. First case is case number 4133. William Reed requesting a variance of 15 feet from the west side yard setback requirement of 20 feet and a variance of 50 feet from the lot width requirement of 125 feet. The variance will allow the proposed house to be 5 feet from the west side property line. The property is located at 703 Pebble Point, lot 1. <coughs> Pebble Point Estate is Group A, Article 16, on Wilson County Tax Map 24H. The property consists of approximately 28,700 square feet and is on A1 Agricultural. We have staff recommendations on 4133. Okay, Mr. Chairman, uh, the applicant is requesting a variance of 15 feet from the west side yard setback requirement of 20 feet and a variance of 50 feet from the lot width requirement of 125 feet. Um, briefly, if you look back here, in this general vicinity appears to be what's been marked off by someone as their soils area on the property, and the, the house looks as though it's gonna go back in this general vicinity uh, just based on the stakes we saw out there. Uh, um, and they're w wishing to be five feet from this property line. Um, the 125 foot lot width variance is just a, a product of 
this being an older lot of record and we went ahead and included that variance request because most of the lots in this sub particular subdivision development are substandard lots that predate the zoning ordinance um, the zoning ordinance states that for single and two-story structures not served by public sewer system located on interior lots side yards shall not be less than 20 foot in width for a principal structure as well as for dwellings that are not served by public sewer system there should be a minimum lot width of 125 feet at the front building line however this is an older lot of record with the lot being created in no uh, on november 8th not 1961 uh, you may recall that we adopted zoning in 1974 in wilson county therefore being that this is a uh, non-conforming uh, lot of record staff can recommend approval Really no opening statement, but we're here if there's any questions or anything. I, I, I guess the one thing we'll point out is the lots to the left there. You can see the three on the left side. Those um, are, are facing kind of an extension in Man Road, I believe, and they have a setback of 40 feet on the back side. I think that's, I think that's a correct statement. That's my interpretation anyway. Uh, that would depend on whether or not the little strip you see there is a public road or not or considered a public road right away and I'd have to do more research I wasn't I wasn't evaluating those lots so um, at least initially this one might may be considered a corner lot but uh, I would think initially they may they may be entitled to the same um, 20 foot setback side yard requirement that that you are yeah okay uh, Staff will note there is a precedent for allowing setback variances in this neighborhood, just given the, the era of the development. Um, is this one back up to the lake? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, the, the lake is back here. Okay. I'm sorry, I guess my other comment is what you were saying about the survey and so forth. That is correct. The septic towards the front and house in the middle there. Anyone have any other questions for the applicant? If not, thank you, sir. Anyone else here wishes to address 4133? Yes, I do. Come forward, please. Good morning. Could you give us your name, please? Cecilia Dunn. Oh, and Britt Bogus. Yes, sir. Would you like to have a board? Okay, we're actually the brother and the sister of the owner of those two lots that appear to be on the corner, those two lots, right. And it was our understanding that the house was going to be behind those two lots. Can you show me again where the house is actually going to be located? I, I can't be overly specific because I don't have the survey to show you, but... Um, but effectively the soils area was up in this area and it appeared as though they had the house staked back in this general vicinity okay the, the, the applicant may be more prepared to be a little more specific i don't know i'm fairly certain it's past the lot line of the, of the second lot so it would be back here somewhere yes, yes. well we have concerns with uh, uh fire issues we also have concerns with the septic. Uh, we feel like, you know, we bought these lots like 35 years ago. And we realized at that point in time that those lots were fairly narrow lots and that we needed to purchase more than one of them to build the kind of structure that we would like to have. And it's uh, my opinion, and not very learned, of course, but just from a standpoint of fire hazards and so forth, if we and others were to decide to build on our lots that five feet is totally insufficient um, if we were to ask for the same thing that would put houses like 10 feet apart that's that correct. would be like living in those tiny if, if you were to ask for the same thing and it'd be granted by the board that's correct so we oppose that okay. um, 
oh. especially with the uncertainty of where exactly where the house might be once construction starts. You know, um, the I, I guess just like I said, my biggest concern is fire, uh, fire rated construction, and um, I guess there's some also some issues with it sounds like maybe the septic tank and placement of that and uh, what's the problem with actually centering the house or building a structure that actually complies with the guidelines in that community you know this has been a a, a community that people like to come and and have uh, their vacations they spend a lot of their summers there uh, especially with it being on the lake I know there's some permanent residents there but there are very many people along that strip that have those homes as uh, summer homes or vacation homes and that kind of thing and enjoy the space and the distance between the two places or their places. And that was what we had in mind when we bought those lots. Uh, I would concur that this neighborhood probably was initially developed as sort of a fishing camp village, right. uh, just from my perspective. Uh, I wasn't here when it was developed, but, uh, but it's just my perception that's what they were, particularly given some of the homes that have been either knocked down and something new built um, unfortunately with valuation of lake lots and and uh, lakefront communities increasing over the years uh, some of the the little fishing camps that you see are being replaced as time goes on with people building more permanent or larger residences even if they are summer homes and yeah. that's thus the kind of variances that, that you're getting now um, I believe the lot itself is 75 feet wide. Is that correct, Karen? So it's a narrow lot to begin with. If you if right. you if you put 20 foot side setbacks on both sides of that, you're left with roughly 35 foot of lot width to build a house. Uh, not that not that it's relevant or anything, but I have a little bit of history for that. Uh, I was actually in college, and one of my college classmates' grandfather was the one that developed the entire Pebble Point community hmm. and separated the tracks out. And he actually sold that to a bunch of his friends and stuff, separated the tracks out so that they would have a place to come for the summers. They used to have a big picnic every summer and everything. That was back in, uh, I actually recommended us purchasing it back in 86, 1986. Is that when it was? Fairly close, yeah. About 1986 when we purchased those lots because, like she said, like he said, it was a community basically that most of the people up there had permanent structures in Nashville, but they had those summer homes. Uh, that they would come up and spend the summers with and have picnics with and boats and things like that. So it was kind of a getaway because of the space that they had. You know, and like she said, we purchased two of those lots because we knew, because uh, those lots actually now belong to my older brother who actually lives in Texas. And that's why we're here representing him. But when he retires, it's his intention to come back and build his retirement home on those two lots. So we're basically here speaking on his behalf because he couldn't make the meeting with the concerns that he has for that. Well, how many variances have we? Been there's been there's been several. I could I I couldn't hazard a guess. The development was developed in the 60s, as you know, right? Before the war. Right. And put everything in a really concise or a little short statement. It is not appropriate for the ordinance to be enforced against a lot that was developed. Well, the ordinance was created. And so, you know, it, 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 the ordinance was adopted, but they have the right to claim uh, grandfather. And uh, we see this on a very regular basis here around the, not only on the Temple Point, but all around the Olympia Empowerment, where a lot of lots were created in the 50s and 60s, and people come forward and, and we're. I guess obligated, this might be a little strong, but it begins to be appropriate to give them relief from the ordinance because it came into play after the law was created. In this case, 10 years after, in some cases, law was banned. That lot, though, was purchased, you know, with full knowledge of what the present ordinance is. And, and I think. The knowledge that it was probably or the knowledge was out there that it could, you know, more than likely, based on the. Uh, situation that's correct but still we oppose that because were we to come back and ask for the same thing and you were to grant us that same thing if we were 
uh, apt to do such something like that. That would put those houses l 10 feet apart, and that would represent a distinct fire hazard to e any family that moved in either one of our structures. And with there being no structures on there now, it's, uh, I guess my question is, why can't the structure be centered more on the lot? There appears to be a larger or uh, wider space on the east side as opposed to the very narrow space on the west side well so that if you look and i i have no way first of all these parcel lines are for reference only they they are digitized lines that were digitized by from hand-drawn parcel alignments in the assessor's office of course several several years ago so th this is not survey grade but it does beg the question with this this structure on this tract You'll notice that their their carport and a portion of their home appeared across the line. Wow. So there's there's the possibility they have an encroachment on the east side from the neighbor's house that they're going to have to resolve at some point between that neighbor and they, um, and that may be what's pushing them to the east. I I don't know, but I, I haven't talked to the applicant about that, but. Would you, would you mind coming to the microphone? If you guys could sit down for just right. a moment and let him talk. And, Thank you. And then you can get back up if the chairman needs to talk with you. So the question is, why can't, why can't you center your proposal? Um, yeah, and what, is it Tom? Yes. Yeah, just talked about is exactly part of the issue. We have a, a resolution with the, with the neighbor. Um, and and that is part of the reason why we want to uh, why we're asking for the variance is to um, shift the houses uh, over over to the or shift the property to the line. left. What's that? Or shift the property line? Not not the property line. No, no. We've worked out an easement with. Uh, so you have an encroachment the, easement for the house from on the neighboring line. That's right. So okay. they don't have to tear anything down or, or whatever. So the spot that's in between that corner of their house um, that you can see on the picture and 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 where we want to put the house, which is um, kind of in the center of that area between. Do you need a laser pointer? Thank you. Yes, so this little spot right in here is kind of the sweet spot, so to speak, um, septic being here. And so we do have room to, to plant it right in, right in that area. Um, keep in mind, this is 400 feet here. Um, if this is 75 feet, I think these are 150 foot lots. I'm, I'm just going off a scale of the picture. So obviously quite a bit more room uh, over here to maneuver things versus what we're dealing with. And uh, as the chairman talked about, we, uh, we thought we had a you know, pretty good case and a reasonable request here. Um, How far off center are you at this point? Do you know with the well? Uh, um, we would be... Um, 15 feet or so off of the right side and five feet off of the left side so 20 feet off of 75 which gives you a 45 foot footprint and we might be a little bit less than that but you know 40 foot width house is kind of a typical yeah but unless you're asking for a variance on correct. the side as well. you're, you're not correct. asking for a variance correct right. correct I'm sorry so yes minimum. so 20 Minus the five, 25 off of 75, so 40 foot, which is but kind of standard foot width of the house. Right. Right. Welcome. Yes, these folks y'all have any idea of the soils areas are for the lots that your brother owns? How are we doing that? And could you more explain, I guess, to to us what you mean by the soils area? Okay. What are you it's the fill lines for your septic system. So, so where they ha they they have to go in a specific type of soil that the state of Tennessee deems uh, it, it percolates correctly uh, to take the 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 fluid, if you will, from your septic tank and filter it down through the through the uh, ground to treat it effectively. So it's got to be a certain type of soil. Is 
they're right in here. You can't build on your field line. Your house has to be. You got to be at least ten feet from them. So it may push. It so it limits. It, 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 it inhibits or limits what we may or may not be able to do as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, your soils do. Right. Not, not necessarily what he's doing limits what you you're doing, but but wherever the location of your soils approval ultimately ends up being, let's say it's back here, which does make a little bit of sense if his is right here, mm -hmm. that it'd be the same type of soil up in here. Um, it would probably push your house this direction. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't had that test done. No, we don't know. And what you say makes a good point. Hmm. Uh, and, and very much the opposite might be true. The, your soldiers may be in the front. Yeah. Or there may be no soldiers at all. We have that, and that's not our thing. That's the state ground. It's a state. If you're interested in building a house, I would suggest that you get that work done. Oh, we, we will. At yeah. Point. My name is Bart Netherland, um, representing uh, Justin Manning, which is the property owner to the other side. This right here? Um, yes. Uh, one thing I know y'all brought up, there's precedence here for doing this in the community. Is there precedence for granting variances for the lots that adjoin lots outside of this community? Uh, what? Yeah. Uh, I think if you're saying there's precedence for granting variances against other lots within the community, it doesn't sound like there's a precedence for granting variances for lots adjoining the outside of the community. Uh, th that's a that's a hard question to answer because one, the core of engineers' property line would be outside the community, and we have definitely granted variances against it. We've also granted variances, I think, on the opposite end of Pebble Point. Uh, okay there at the at the at the far end so just there, based on my, my own recollection so there could uh, be a there precedence could, there but yes there's not a guaranteed precedence for granting variances against a lot outside no so without doing some additional research i couldn't okay. couldn't say beyond a shadow of a doubt i understand i understand i've done a little research and the the road right away that you see there on uh, the screen, that's the old alignment of Man Road. Um, it used to go to the lake, turn and come back up. It was realigned. Uh, Mr. Manning's lot was platted when it faced Man Road. So right now he has a 40-foot setback against their property line. I think you'll agree when he goes to build his property, he's not going to face the adjoining lot. Um, he will probably face the road with his house. Are you saying he'll face this strip? I think he will face Man Road. So, um, so he's got a pretty. So you think lot. you think he'll he'll face this way? Yes, that's okay. correct. Um, and uh, with with that being said, I think you know we're not really looking at him having. You know, I think he will be in at that time. You know, asking for uh, you to consider the the uh, setbacks a little different, being that the road has been realigned since that plat was made. Um, well, given given some of the description you've you've provided, he may very well be entitled to to consideration by this board if he could, if he's got a unique hardship that's specific to his lot. Yeah, and the road realignment may certainly qualify as that, but. And and I think that gets back to. No, I think that's the. Yeah. And, and I don't think that lies before the board today. Will you? No, it, it's not. But it, it gets back to what they're saying. Should he come in? You know, you're saying they're building a lot. Wait, wait, wait. If someone wants to make application and they want to gather their facts and present it to the board, that's that's fine. But trying to dig up a set of facts uh, to the board out on a case that may come in the future is not appropriate. Okay, I, I, well, I'll, I'll speak not, back. I'm not going to sit here and give somebody a green light on what may happen in the future. 
based on what we're doing today. That's We've got a specific lot, specific request before us right there. Okay. And, and so if you allow the precedence of the five foot there in the future, I understand that's separate. So I will, I will quit on that. The other thing um, that I have kind of looked into research wise, currently there's a drainage culvert at the intersection of Pebble Point and Man Road. That drainage culvert, to my best estimation, between what is on the, the, what you're seeing on the screen right side of Man Road, as well as where it drains on the screen left side of Man Road, is somewhere around 3.3 acres. Um, you can do a whole bunch of different drainage calculations to figure runoff. There's rational methods, there's simple methods. Different engineers use different things. What I typically use is what's called the rational math method. Uh, you can present hydrographs, different things, but. Let me stop. Are you a civil engineer? Yes, sir. Okay, that's fine. You're registered, you can to speak to that. I am not a registered engineer. I'm an EIT. I've, I've ran a engineering oh, firm. I'm a TDEC level two, and I have training on everything that I'm presenting today. This board to accept testimony from, from someone about you know, what may happen in the future. You have to be a licensed profession. You have to have a license to be an appraiser. You have to be a property You have to have a license to be an engineer if you uh, are going to speak to engineering issues. I, I will say as a TDEC level two certified person that is trained on designing catch basins, drainage structures, everything in the state of Tennessee, as well as someone that's registered with the Tennessee to be able to go out and inspect drainage issues. Um, I have <laughs> adequate training on what I'm presenting today. I was sworn in. I'm not lying on any of these facts. If I could, yes. Right now, all of this this water, it goes into swells and sheets across this lot. This lot right now, the Luan Reed lot, it is situated to where it drains to the left side. Should you build a house across that lot, and you leave a five foot opening, all of that water cannot be concentrated onto that five foot strip and run there. It's, it's, it is not possible. You could build a drainage catch basin and pipe the water. It would be somewhere at a 24 inch minimum pipe to carry a five year rainfall event. That means there's a good chance that that rainfall of that intensity will fall within five years. Should they put that pipe in and someone build on a fence on the property line, there's no way they can maintain that and what are the issues with the water? There's no way you can build a house five foot from the property line and maintain that for fire ac fire access or anything. That would that would be totally different and up to them. Storm water right now isn't crossing the property line. It is, but it is sheet flowing. It is spread out, flowing across it. Acting like the property line is a fixed wall, though. If we build this house, then the property line is like a, a, a wall. Uh, these other folks build, they're going to be some distance away from the property line, which you're not considering in your calculation. I, I'm considering a five foot from the edge of the property line to the edge of the structure. In Tennessee, minimum swell size to carry that volume of water is not adequate there. And that's what I said. They would have to build either a catch basin beside it and pipe the water underneath, but then you can't fit an eight-foot piece of machine to ever work behind there or do anything. There's no access to the back of their property. They can't go around the other side. There's a house that extends out onto the property. Mr. Chairman, I cannot speak for the stormwater office. They, there is a representative here. Um, how, however, I will point out that in our site review, there are some drainage, there's some natural drains in the middle of the lot that would likely have to be dealt with with regard to any building or construction on the property. And as such, I'm going to strongly suspect that stormwater, when they go out to do their initial stormwater evaluation, are going to deem this a critical lot. 
So with, as a critical lot, it has to meet certain engineering criteria and things like that. Now, that doesn't stop them from building. It just means that they, they have to address some of the drainage and, and that, that kind of thing. That comes in probably with the pro permit process. It has nothing to do with what's before you necessarily. But, the last thing that I would bring up is they mentioned they're wanting a 40 foot wide house on the property and their 20 foot variance on one side that's 60 foot so why are they needing to go all the way five foot over the, the math does not add up on this um, so I, I don't if they're saying they want that size footprint they need a 10 foot variance according to what I'm calculating if it's a 45 foot if it's a, a 40 foot you'd have 20 on one side which is 60 which then gives you 15 foot on the other so what they're saying the variance that they're asking for is greater than the footprint they need which means they're pulling the house even further over than the 20 foot setback that exists on one side I think with everything I've, I've tried to explain today uh, you know this lot it's it's sat there for a long time everyone knows the issues with it I would strongly urge you to vote no let the parties talk amongst themselves and come back if they want a 10 foot variance or uh, a five foot variance or, or something different but I think five foot uh, off the property line is very excessive for what they're describing at this time thank you yes sir. yes I'm not sure what Yes, it is a challenging lot. We understand that water flow. Um, we understand that that something has to be addressed. There is a lot of rock down in that uh, bottom third of the property. So um, we, uh, we understand it's a challenging lot. <clears throat> We're gonna have to work through some of the engineering things. The reason, as it relates to the math of the five feet, uh, what we're trying to do is build a little flexibility into um, the situation so when we go in front of like say storm and engineering with the rock and so forth that we've got some flexibility it's not really our intent to necessarily build right at that five foot line but we reason we're asking for the variance so that when we're sitting down with the engineers we can position this thing in the most practical way that takes into account all of the all the concerns and all the challenges of of this slot as it relates to we we can if that's what it needs to be Tom, if we ran a 10 foot variance we need to go to the other side a lot and adjust that that back as well uh you're welcome i mean you you would you would be within your rights i mean yeah we need to happen if, uh, we, if we make this with 10 does the opposite one need to become 15 instead of 20. Uh, well, to, I'm assuming to fit what their intent is, it may need to. It it doesn't as it relates to our, you know. Okay. What you say? I think that would give us some flexibility. Since you're willing to negotiate for the 10 feet, I think that would be appropriate to allow five feet on the side. Yeah, just give them a little more. So the gentleman's trying to accommodate, I guess, the 10 feet. Okay. Can I, one more yeah. question? Um, so the so the 10 foot on that side because of the encroachment over there and what we've agreed to and everything it, it doesn't serve any purpose for us so um i just want to mention that Thank you. anyone else here which should address 4133 with any new information if not i'll close the public hearing in regard to 4133 does the board have any questions or do they have motion and if there are no questions, I might make a motion that we approve a 10 foot variance for the west side of this case and a 5 foot variance for the east <coughs> side of this case. That's going to put in a 10 and a 15. Correct, Tom? Huh? Yes. Okay, so we've got a 10 foot variance on one side, on the west side, and a 5 foot on the opposite side. Do, uh, in regard to uh, the motion, do I have a second? Awesome. A motion to second. Now, discussion by the board. Who seconded? Crockett. Okay. Mr. Crockett. 
If there is no discussion, all in favor of aye. 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 Opposition vote no. Yeah, thank all y'all for coming. Okay, our next case is case 4134. We do not want to question the one year extension on the expired building permit. The building permit expired August the 26th of 2023. Construction hasn't started at this time. The property is located at 741 Neal Road, Lot 6, Kramer property, parcel 43.07, on Wilson County Tax Map 128. The property is 12.46 acres and is on A1 Neal Staff on Mr. Chairman, the applicant is requesting a one-year expired building permit. The building permit expired August 26, 2023. The building permit issued in the county expires 24 months after issuance in which the structure or residence is to be completed unless the applicant receives some sort of extension or relief from this board. None of this has been done for this structure in the 24-month period to date. There is no language in the zoning ordinance that discusses staff authority to grant permit extensions. Therefore, staff can't recommend approval, but the board may consider such request. Staff would also note that upon site review, there appeared to be a pavilion type structure being built on the property. Uh, the building inspection office does not have a permit for this structure and would, we would need to obtain one for it to be legal. William Knight. Anything you'd like to say? Just requesting that one year extension due to the fact that uh, when we pulled the permit for a detached garage, we were required to pull the permit for the house um, at the same time in order to get the sizing of the detached garage that we were requesting. Um, so that delayed us in the house build itself. So this is for a house? Yes, sir. Okay. And you, you have built a detached garage? Correct. You need this variance for the or this extension for the house. Yes, sir. Did you build something without a permit? Um, the garage itself it was all permitted. There's a there's a pavilion for the pool. Um, yes, there is a, a small pavilion. Yes. Okay, we need to get a permit for that. Was not. I, I was not aware that I needed one for a small pavilion like that. That's all. Uh, I think a year is going to do it. Yes, sir. Yeah, there was availability of certain materials we were waiting on. Um, and again, the, the delay for having to build that other structure at the same time. So I had two permits that were required to be done in one year. Board have any questions for that? Anyone else here? Second. Okay, Robinson. Um, okay. Our next case is case 4135. Larry True requesting a 20 foot 
variance from the rear yard setback upon the 40 feet and a 30 foot variance from the rear property line. Or excuse me, the existing deck is 30 feet from the rear property line. And if one is replaced the deck and be 10 feet from the rear property line. The property is located at 2840 Florida Road, Lot 1, Lenny and Goodrich property, cost of 66.01 or Wilson County Tax Cap 71. Property is consists of 1.6489 acres and is on R1 residential. We staff time account Okay. The applicant is requesting a, t a 20 foot variance from the rear yard setback requirement of 40 foot. The zoning ordinance states that for principal structures not served by public sewer systems, there should be a rear yard of not less than 40 foot. This is not an older lot of record with the lot being created in best we can tell in September of 1999. Uh, I'm going to go into that a little bit more here in a moment. Therefore, given the language in the zoning ordinance, staff cannot recommend approval. Staff will also note, however, that the existing home itself was built in 1980 per tax records and appears to be within 30 foot of the same rear property line where a 40 foot setback would have been required. Um, so it's the same property line from which the variance is being requested to be 20 foot now for this deck. Uh, staff will also note that there was a previously existing deck that has now been demolished, presumably uh, to be replaced by what's being proposed. Um, and that existing deck would have encroached at least 10 foot along with the corner of the house. So what I'm talking about, if you turn around and look, is this corner is within about 30 foot of the property line as it exists. This is the deck, that the previous deck that's now been demolished. Uh, in preparation for the replacement deck. They're asking for a 20 foot variance to be within 20 foot of that rear property line. I'm gonna pass this down. Um, this is from 1999 and then it goes all the way back to a previous plat in terms of tracking it back. Um, this was part of a larger um, par uh, parcel uh, when the house was built. I think this property was a part of it and this property was a part of it. Um, and at the time, it was a corner lot, so the setbacks have actually changed because of the subdivision. This overall lot was a corner lot, and it had two fronts and two rears. Um, now, this is the corner lot, and these two have standard setbacks, if that makes sense uh, at all. Um, it's it more or less. It's it's a little bit of a hot mess following the 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 plat trail. Let me ask you something to clear me up. Okay. How far is was the existing deck off the property? It's demolished, but the best I can tell, it was approximately th the same as the corner, about thirty foot of the house. It was approximately thirty foot. A forty foot and they were thirty foot off, approximately, with the existing deck or the deck has been demolished. Deck and house, yes. Roughly. Are you done? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Larry True Jr. What would you like to tell the With this line that goes halfway, a quarter of my house is, is in the zone, and then half of my porch. And you know, like I said, the house was built in 1980, so did it pass that then uh, for the porch to be built? And now I go to replace it. I'm just making the steps a foot wider and uh, two feet coming out. So it's kind of making it where it's easier to build. And you know, I got, it's, I'm getting both porches done, the front and the back. And I've been waiting four weeks to be coming here to see if I can get approved. I just don't understand how it could be zoned to go right through the corner of my house and half of the porch. I can't answer that, but uh, that's what this plan says. So whoever, whoever built the house 
encroached on the setback in one hole. Yes. Was that I, back when presumably was in 1980. That whole thing was you know, one big lot. And somebody sold that front lot, which made that a corner lot. And then I got the 1.6 and the 9.0 acres. And I don't know if that's what messed it up. Yeah, let, me, let me ask you about that. So the, the lot itself has been changed since the original house. Yes, uh, that, that one house has been built. Mr. Neal, the corner. this lot and this lot initially were part of the same property. If you look at the, the I think the back page plat, you'll see that. And then the second plat that was done in 99, along with that certificate of correction that the surveyor did because of some error on the new plat, uh, effectively split this lot out and this lot out. I don't think so. So it would have been encroached from the day they built it. Yeah. But this, this plat we've got here, I mean, how did they get all these signatures on here with a, with a setback or anything? I, I don't know. I was in fourth grade. <laughs> so. I was out of college by then, but, but. Hey, you're gonna have to go back and do different. Yes, sir. And it's, uh, and it's not necessarily an odd shaped lot. Yet, to some degree, the way the house is positioned on the lot kind of makes it an odd shaped house. And there's no doing to this gentleman. Would that not? That's correct. I mean, all if they had just put it a little more parallel, it would, it would fit in there fine. I don't, I don't know if that in and of itself is a hardship. Well, I don't imagine that's just going to be under the heading of regulatory error. Um, okay. Any other comments or uh, discussion by the board? And if not, we'll hear a motion in regard to 4135, and this is a request for a 20 yard, excuse me, 20 foot rear yard setback. I'm going to make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve by Ms. Robinson. Um, the staff said they recommended denial. That's just based on the letter of the ordinance. But uh, what about the what about this sign plan? Did hmm. that not? Yeah, I mean that's certainly something you can consider. Okay, so you're making all these on the back of the for here. Yes, sir. Okay, so I'm sorry. I'll second that. I'm motion to second. Any further discussion by the board? No, all in favor vote aye. 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 Opposition vote no. The yeah, ayes have it. Thank you for coming, sir. Appreciate Thank you. And sorry right, about the good day. Who's second? Blades? Okay. Okay, in this case, it's 4136. Jeremy Smart on behalf of Philip Smart requesting to have two dwellings on one track of land. Uh, Jeremy Smart on behalf of Philip Smart is requesting to have, oh, excuse me, I've already, I'm on the wrong document. The applicant is, is yeah, the applicant is requesting to have two dwellings on one tract of land 
The tract of land only has approximately 77 feet of road frontage. This width or length of road frontage will only accommodate a single residential lot and residence. Therefore, this property is unable to be subdivided in a manner that meets requirements for two separate tracts of land in Wilson County. Each one being required to have 50 feet of road frontage that remains 50 feet back to the buildable portion of, of any proposed subdivision lot. Given the language in the zoning ordinance, staff cannot recommend approval due to the restriction of only one home per tract of land. The board may consider specific hardships that may affect the tract of land in this request. We have had one phone call from a neighbor um, who didn't seem to have a lot of concerns about, and Karen, you may, um, the, the, the phone call you received from the neighbor didn't seem to have a lot of concerns about the variance itself as much as construction related nuisance issues, I think. Correct, and I Mark. We'd like to tell the board, sir. Um, the house that we're proposing to be put on the lot is a mobile home, so we did that with the idea of knowing there wasn't enough road frontage for two lots to be back there. That way, if the lot was ever going to be divided um, or ever sold, we're going to move it with the intention. Uh, my parents live on the lot, and uh, my dad's here. Um, they're getting older i'd like to be closer to them to help take care of them and then also we'd like to do a little farm back there for um goats is what we're trying to do on that 15 acres that we have i don't right off the top of my head yeah it's a new a lot of record uh meaning it's it was definitely done after 1974. and that there's an existing house and then you're wanting to add a mobile home yes sir The back side of the land is all core property. The front side is the Abbots Ford neighborhood. And then the, uh, I guess it's the northern side of the property is uh, in the family as well. The, the there, there's currently a RV on the property. Is it being lived in at present? Occasionally, yes. Okay. There, I guess there's a zoning law that allows what do you call it, an in-laws? But there is, there, it does allow, uh, excuse me, an accessory dwelling unit, but I believe there's language in there specific, unless granted variance by this board that says that it cannot be a uh, RV. I'm just, that, that, that was something that, that an idea of something, a different way you may end up having that. Right. Yeah. Well, the one we're doing is a. I mean, it's a house, but it won't be put on a permanent foundation. You know, it's two sections that they'll bring right. in, and that might address the construction concern. We're not going to have a lot of heavy equipment coming up there, other than to put the house in place and then leave, and then after that. Currently, we have power up there and uh, water, and the soils does perk for an area. Yes, sir. If my dad ever decides to sell his house, then we would move elsewhere. And the research we've done on it, the the value of the house doesn't lose a whole lot as it is. The people we bought it from, the guy that's going to be helping install it, he often buys those almost for the amount that we're paying for it and puts them on private lots and uses them that way. So. We're just asking for a variance. You yes, sir. Well, I mean, if it's possible, yes, sir. Really, 
they really made a challenge. Uh, look, I would say more than three quarters of them have that. And that's, that's a very significant thing. My concern is, and I take the good word that what you're telling me, I take the truth that the future is never know what the hope is. Well, that's true, yes, sir. Allowed, and then it doesn't, it's not with yeah, uh, and we are aware too that if we do put it there, I mean, the, there's no resale really value for it because it's sitting on his land. Why do you want to do this? Is it back up to the, put it back, back up to the core property. So are you going to use this as a lake home? Is that what you're doing? <laughs> no, we're going to be farming out there. It's my granddad's old farm that's been parceled off. That's kind of the last piece that we have. Just uh, by having this e existing mobile home or trailer on the property already, are they not in violation of any of this? They, they potentially could be unless they're staying in at, at stints of less than two weeks at a time. Um, I do think one of my staff members noticed that it was hooked, was, was it not hooked up to utilities? It had septic yeah, connection and septic connection we power power we would typically allow a connection to just from the standpoint of people want to keep their camper winterized and or, or not have to fully winterize it by keeping heat running to it or whatever but uh but with the other utility connections uh unless you're staying there in stints of less than two weeks at a time uh there's not a lot of uh wiggle room there in our zoning enforcement yes sir Based on these pictures, it looks like a permanent, permanent structure to me. Yes, sir. Is that the, the structure you're wanting approval for? No, sir. Okay. It's a actual house. It's okay. 80 by 40. You'd want an additional. Right. Well, just to put a house on the lot next right. to Right. Well, what, the, what the ordinance would allow, just for everybody's benefit, we do allow accessory dwelling units that are, uh, they can be part of a larger structure but the living space can be no more than one bedroom, no more than 600 square feet um, uh, total. With, and that would be the kitchen, bathroom, living area, and, be, and the one bedroom. And that's subject. You can do that without a variance. You can do that without a variance. So, and that's subject to you having the only ramification. Are you on septic here? You would have to have enough. We would be on septic. You'd have we to have, have enough. The soils perked for it on the. So you have additional, you have additional separate perks. Okay. This, this picture shows this camper. <coughs> no, it's a, they pump it out if it gets full, just as needed. It's, that would be a violation if they're, if they're there more than two, two weeks at a time. No, just if it fills up that way, we don't have to haul it off or dump it into their separate uh, tank. It's can't a, speak to that. That would be a state issue. But yeah, we're not sharing this septic. We don't do anything with that. It's uh, what's the name of the company? It's when the plat was approved. Out. I was just saying, I just for Mr. Record. Chairman, the plat was recorded for this subdivision in March of '99. That's what my staff's found. If not, does anyone else here wish to address 4136 Smart? Yes, I'm Hi there. Uh, it's Mike Taplinger. I live at 803 Austin's Way, which is diagonally across from that property. Um, I have two concerns. Um, one is that we sat through over a year of very loud construction, um, and we really don't want to have to do that again unless you folks tell me this is legally necessary um, the second thing is uh, part of that construction was uh, leaving just a dirt or rather gravel um, driveway so that every time one of those trucks or a car comes down it's is noisier than every up everybody else's driveway which are paved and it has uh, resulted in destruction of the road to a significant degree, I have pictures. So I really would, um, in, in fact, what's happened is that every time a car comes out of the driveway, there's just more gravel thrown in front of my driveway. So I would really, um, my concerns are noise and further uh, deterioration of the road. Um, 
<laughs> I, I no worries. They're starting already. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's all I want to say. Austin's way. I don't want to say destroyed. I shouldn't say destroyed, but it's been degraded considerably. And I have pictures if you folks would like to see. So if you play the gravel from the gravel driveway, it gets out on the pavement and is people run over it. Right. right. That's part of it. That's part of it. Plus the actual degradation of Austin's way itself from all the heavy trucks. Mm -hmm. Correct. The, uh, speaking to the noise, we do not have a noise ordinance in the county with one exception. We do have a construction noise ordinance. The construction noise is, I think, above 60 decibels. Um, you can have that type of construction noise if you've got valid permits, building permits. Um, but it's between the hours of, I think, 6 a.m. and 30 minutes after sunset based on National Weather Service data for, for your area. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they're, it's a noise ordinance, but it's also a, maybe an, a noise allowance during daylight hours, if you will, um, uh, if they've got permits for what they're doing, uh, if, they're, if they're required. Uh, the gravel driveway, we don't have any requirements against somebody having a gravel versus a paved driveway. Um, I, so I don't, I don't think there's anything this board or, or the county, for that matter, under enforcement could do about that. Mm -hmm. the, in terms of the road itself, uh, Austin's Way, um, and any other road that connects to Austin's Way, that would probably be the purview of the county road commission as to whether or not they feel that whatever's happening from a particular site warrants uh, additional sureties being posted or something like that for for uh, ongoing maintenance uh, but the, none of those issues are, are things I think this board can really consider um, the, the the issue before them is whether or not they're going to allow a permit for a second full-on dwelling outside of the provisions of an accessory dwelling unit which would be allowed without coming before this board Okay, I, I, I understand that. Thank you for the clarification. No problem. Um, my point is I, we just don't want to live in a perpetual state of construction there. Understood. Thank you. We've been told um, that the installation will take approximately a week and it will be over with after that. If there's no one else that wishes to address the case, then we'll close the public comment period. <coughs> and turning to the board in regard to case 4136, I hear Mr. Chairman, I will move that we deny case 4136 based on the staff recommendations. Okay. I have a motion to deny 4136 based on staff recommendations. I have a second. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion by the board? If not, all in favor vote aye. 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 Opposition vote no. No. They have one vote. So the motion to deny passes four in favor, one opposed. Okay. Now, moving on, I guess the, well, the next thing we have to do is the calendar. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Calendar. This one will circulate the calendar earlier. And this is basically the same format we had before. Is that correct? Huh? I believe so. All right. Uh, I hear a motion that we approve the calendar for 2024. Motion to approve. Second. And motion to second. Discussion on the calendar. All in favor of aye. Aye. Opposition vote no. The calendar is adopted. Mr. Chairman, I, I have one other item of business. Uh, the uh, November 30th, I believe, is that correct? Um, we are having a workshop at the request of the Planning and Zoning Committee on a amendment proposal that I've drafted uh, in regard to trying to clarify the definition of uh, home occupation um, and, and give some more descriptive elements to, to, to constitute maybe what is and what's not uh, considered part 
of a natural home occupation as we interpret it in our zoning ordinance. Um, I won't say it's perfect or anything, but it's gotten a l little bit more discussion than I anticipated, and uh, uh, they have asked that uh, we hold a joint workshop whereby all of the Board of Zoning Appeals members are invited, all of the Planning Commission members are invited, as well as the County Commissioners are invited, just so we 5 p.m. on November 30th. I will talk to Mike and see if he thinks that this may help y'all with some of your continuing ed requirements since we are talking about zoning regulation and land use rights. Uh, it may or may not. I'll just have to see what Mike says on that. But if I can get you a little bit of continuing ed credit for it, I will. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We, we can at least do that until somebody tells us different, right? There you go. All right. Uh, All right. Anything else we can talk about? Not that I know of, sir. Everybody good? We are adjourned.